Hello! Welcome back to April Space 4.13. We're almost halfway through yes. Arc 3. And you know what else? Guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm fully vaccinated now. Holy shit, he's immune. Yeah, so your London field won't work on me. Anymore. I only have half the vaccination. Can I stand against his power? <laughs> this guy, he's not ready for me. Uh, but no, can you give us a quick rerun, or not rerun, recap of what happened last time? Previously on April Space. So, the fight continued between uh, Dragon and Darren Roche. Um, mm -hmm. they, they fought for a while. The, Darren got the upper hand by stabbing Dragon in the fucking stomach. But just as it seemed like all hope was lost for our protagonist, um, a mysterious figure punched and fucking donutted Roche. And it was revealed to be oh! Benjamin Rose. Who was really? Really, North, the the previous member of um, Skipper's crew. who Dragon One of the four placed. heavenly kings of the he Cardinal has. Directions. The guy who, he's an umbrance, and he's good with holograms. Actually, the Cardinal Directions also lose their power in a sci-fi setting, because when you have, like, all of space, there isn't really north and south and east and west. It's, like, planetary. Oh, yeah. Right? It's just a name. So, he's not as strong right now while they're on a spaceship, because <laughs> there's no real north. It's kind of so concept. Now would, be the t now would be the time for Jagan to strike back while he's weakest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that happened last time. <clears throat> yeah. So... Without further ado, let's see what crazy things Dragon gets up to. I sure hope it doesn't cut away to someone else. Oh, who would <clears throat> One giant in a metal crater later, here they were. Skipper Ruth and the indomitable Masma walked into the hangar, Skipper slapping his hands together in satisfaction as he looked up at his ship. The slipstream was just as they'd left it, sleek, pristine, and beautiful. There you are, old girl, Skipper grinned. He was trying to get a thing going where he looked like he really cared about his ship. He'd only had it for a few weeks, but he felt like he was making good progress in that regard. This must have seemed like a real heartwarming scene. Ruth rolled her eyes behind him. Looks like the ship's already been unlocked, Skipper continued, clearing his throat as he gestured towards the open clamps. <clears throat> I'm guessing we can thank Mr. Adrian and the Dell Seds for that one, yeah? Yeah, Bruno's voice echoed out from behind them. But we have a problem. Oh, he t where did you come from, Bruno? Skipper turned to look as the blonde-haired boy marched into the hangar, a grim expression on his face. Grimmer than usual, which was saying something. Ruth grinned. Bruno! Serena! She exclaimed, relief evident in her tone, only to be silenced by a regretful glance from Bruno. She narrowed her eyes. Where's Dragon? Bruno finally reached him, stuffing his hands in his pockets as he sighed. That's the problem! He glanced at Masma. Who's this? Masma is the only guy. <laughs> Masma explained. <laughs> Sorry. For a second it looked like Bruno would inquire further, then he just rubbed the bridge of his nose with his fingers and nodded. Okay. What happened, Bruno? Skipper said, voice firm. Thirty words or less, yeah? Again, Bruno nodded. Oh, hang on, I'm gonna count the words after we're done. Me and Dragon came here to get the ship out of impound. We had to bring some techs with us to do that. We split up for a minute. Dragon was watching the ship, and I was going to use the controls. I heard gunfire after I started the unlock sequence, so I rushed back to see what was happening. My hostage ran for it. When I got back here, Dragon was gone. Alright, I'm putting this in word counter. So, give me a minute. Let's see. Let's see how, how he's going. Yeah. It was uh, 73 words, not even fucking close. <laughs> Skipper rubbed his chin with his prosthetic hand, the metal cold against his skin. That's way more than 30 words, he mused. And that's also really bad. You haven't seen him since? Bruno shook his head. I went through some of the nearest corridors to search, but I didn't want to go too far from the ship in case you guys showed up. What, you weren't worried about him? Ruth said, stepping forward indignantly. Bruno turned to look at her, and even Skipper was surprised by the sheer ferocity in it. I assume her eyes. It was eyes. as if Ruth had just... Oh, his eyes, my bad. It was as if Ruth had just slapped him in the face. Of course I was, he snapped. But if I went searching for him and you all showed up here while I was gone, the situation would be even worse. So I did... I did the practical thing. That last bit was muttered, Bruno's eyes staring sadly down at the ground. Ruth glanced away too, for her part, regret obvious in her eyes. Hey, hey! Skipper raised his hands reassuringly. This is a stressful situation. Yeah, I get that too. Let's not say anything we're going to regret later. So, here's what we're going to do. The ship was going down. That was obvious. Every second they were aboard the region increased the chances they would die there. 
There was no point in increasing the risk to all of them any further. Just one of them, then. I'm gonna find Dragon, Skipper said, the tone of his voice permitting no argument. And then I'm bringing him back. That's a fact. You get me? Ruth opened her mouth as if to protest, but a subtle shake of the head from Skipper changed the words that came out of her mouth. How are you gonna find him? She asked quietly. He could be anywhere. Well, Skipper crapped his neck. I'm actually kind of a badass. Bruno, you try an aether ping yet? Bruno nodded. Nothing. So he was out of range then. No problems. I'll just have to give it the old Skipper touch. You guys get the ship ready to go the second I get back. You understand? Bruno stepped forward, eyebrows knit together in frustration. But before he could say anything, his expression so softened. Sure thing, Mr. Skipper, Serena nodded. Come on, Miss Ruth, let's get the ship ready. And with that, she turned and began heading for the slipstream, grabbing Ruth by the hand as she went and pulling her along. Skipper smiled to himself. She seemed like she had her head in the clouds, but Serena Del said always came through when it counted. As Skipper began to make his way back towards the door, he felt a hand reach out and grab his arm. Turning his head, he saw Masma. The, be <laughs> the being's face was twisted in what might have been concern. You're going to go for this guy? He said, voice hushed as if we were whispering, but actually just speaking speaking just as loud. Sure am. This guy is corpse guy now, my guy. Maybe even skeleton. Going back is the errand of fool, okay? Listen to Masma. Listen to wisdom of Masma. See, that's hard to argue with. Skipper wasn't really sure why he'd listened to the wisdom of Masma, since he'd known him for barely an hour, but he didn't say that. Instead, he just chuckled, shrugged Masma's hand off, and shook his head. Can't do that, pal, Skipper said. Dragon's my little buddy. If Dragon had heard that, Skipper had no doubt he would have killed all the crew and then set the ship to self-destruct. Still, Masma seemed to accept that as justification, offering an exaggerated salute as Skipper stalked off. As Skipper left the room, cracking the joints on his fingers in preparation for combat, he could hear Masma talking to Ruth off in the distance. Now it is time for Masma to exit your party. The house of you guys is now having one less guest inside it. Okay? Okay, bye. You'll be a sad girl for some time, Masma thinks, but you must not undergo the sad forever. Someday become happy girl. Understand? Holding balloon like amusement park. Bye. Like amusement park patron. That is who you will be. Roller coaster enjoyer. Angelic person. On all your birthdays, you'll think of Masma and say... Bye. And say how much you missed that guy and knock knock, the door will go. And you'll be so wondering who is in your door. And guess who it is when you open it. Bye! It is Masma. Masma, your comrade. Masma, your savior. Masma forever. Your friend. Bye! The, the door, door slid, slid shut. shut. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got too into it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, I hope... So, is Masma, was he just like a quirky one-off, or is he going to be like the main pivotal character of the whole story now? Of course. No I'm going to say which one. Dragon chuckled, trying to ignore the excruciating pain in his gut. So you're the idiot I replaced. Nice disguise. North laughed back, cracking his shoulder for a moment, and as he did, for a split second, the image of Underman Rose flickered over his own. You liked it? He said. Best kind of disguises are the kind that are as far away from you as possible. More challenged that way, you get me? Dragon raised an eyebrow, trying unsuccessfully to stand up from his slumped position. The way I hear it, he grunted. The best lies ugh, have an element of truth to them. His leg gave way beneath him, and he went sliding back down the wall. North waved a hand dismissively. Face scrunched up in distaste. Ah, oh, no, that shit's for casuals. You know you're really good at what you do when you can come up with pure bullshit and everyone believes it anyway, because you're the one telling it. You know I ran into Skipper and Ruth before. Had a whole ass chat with them. I came from Towden, I said to him. You get it? Get what? Despite the relatively light tone of the conversation, Dragon was glaring daggers at the umbrot. Well, I say that shot... I say that oh, shit, shit, and they assume I mean I'm from Towden, you know? But all I'm really saying is that I was over there, and now I'm over here. You remember, right? That guy Chael's body double? Dragon nodded. Skipper's hunch had been right then. The person covering for the citizen back on Talden had been north, using the same technique he'd used to appear as Enderman Rose, no doubt. So when I say I'm from Talden, I'm not actually saying what they think I'm saying. North laughed, clearly more amused by this than was strictly necessary. I love that kind of exact word shit. I mean, I think that's what I said to them, but it was a while ago. I might have actually just lied and said my family came from there. North was obviously willing to talk about how smart he was and how easily he tricked everyone all day, but Dragon had neither the time nor the blood to stay and listen to it all. What's your point? Dragon spat. Was that stupid rant meant to illustrate something or just fill the silence? 
That just inspired more of North's infuriating laughter. It wasn't even mocking, not really, just more like he found the whole situation genuinely hilarious. <laughs> oh, he's snarky. I didn't think Skipper's new pet would be a snarky guy. Fun! You want revenge for Talden? Dragon said, still doing his best to keep the conversation on some sort of track. We lost you a lucrative contract, I imagine. What? North cocked his head. Nah, this is a coincidence, pal, I swear. I got a job on the ship, and you guys just happened to be here. I admit I wanted to check the new guy out, but this is just a side hustle. Me killing time until it's time to check out, you feel me? He had a job on the ship? Dragon didn't have to think hard to guess what that might have been. You set the bomb? North grinned. Among other things, the Supremacy paid big to get this ship taken down, so I gotta do a good job, you feel me? You're with them, then. I'm being paid by them, North said patiently, as if explaining something very obvious to a child. I don't go into the whole politics shit. I'm just here for the cheddar cheese. Oh, this, well, it's nothing personal, right? I even saved you from this idiot. North tapped Roche's head with his foot again. Don't that prove I ain't got malicious intentions? And why should I believe that? Regardless of whether or not North really had just been killing time, it didn't do much to change the fact that there was a knife sticking out of Dragon's body. Ah, North shrugged. Guess you ain't really got a reason. I'm kind of a suspicious guy, after all. Anyway, that's a nasty wound you got going on there. Want some help? Ha! <laughs> Dragon recognized a euphemism when he saw one. No thanks. Nah, nah, don't be an asshole about it, North chuckled, squatted down to be level with Dragon, and then suddenly leaning forward so that their faces were mere inches from each other. After all, you saved me, right? Grabbed my hand and was all like, fucking run! Damn heroic, that, that thing my heart might have skipped a beat. As North spoke, the umber doubling of his voice shifted so that the undercurrent of his speech became the high-pitched, friendly tones of Wonderman Rose. It was the starkest possible contrast to North's malicious grin and deceitful eyes. Dragon did his best to move a bit further back, to put more distance before them, but that was a fruitless endeavor. He couldn't exactly move through walls, after all. Uh, did you mean between them? Hmm? Oh, yeah, that's Dragon right. Is... <laughs> so, so, since you helped me out and all, North continued, his voice returning to normal, I've got the whole si obligation shit going on. I gotta help you too, right? Dragon glared. And how exactly would you help me? His tone was like a dagger itself. North pouted for a moment at that reply. Man, you're harsh. I say I want to help you out, and you act like I just shat in your sock. I told you already, I'm into that exact word shit, right? So when I tell you I want to help you, you can trust I'm telling the truth. You get me? Nice monologue, but you still haven't answered the question. Well... North dragged out the word as he reached into the inside pocket of his jacket. A second later, he pulled out a red metallic capsule, tossing it up and down in his hand. Like I said, you've got a nasty-looking wound there, pal, and I've got this handy supply of panacea that's just perfect for a case such as the one you and me have got here before us. Not enough of fancy shit like restoring a limb or anything, but plenty fine for closing a stab wound. What do you say? You want to live or you want to die? Dragon's eyes tracked the panacea canister as North tossed it up and down, up and down. Like it or not, it seemed that going along with this imposter was the only way he was getting out of this life. Um, no, are you still following in the text? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you told me not to read him out anymore. I just wanted to make sure. What are your conditions? He said, visibly seething. Huh? Ain't no conditions. I'm just giving it to you since I'm such a nice guy. You just gotta ask. Dragon took a deep breath. Fine. Do it. That ain't asking. North smirked, and as if his demeanor wasn't smug enough, he started spinning the panacea capsule on one finger. You gotta be all polite and shit, you get me? Oh, Mr. North, would you please give me the capsule? If you would, I'd be ever so grateful. Say it like that, yeah? Those exact words. <clears throat> Dragon gritted his teeth. His pride was screaming at him not to give in to this clown, but the cold pain spreading from his torso was recommending quite the opposite. Surely, surely it was fine to grovel just a little bit if it meant saving your own life. Oh, Mr. North, Dragon hissed, squeezing his eyes shut. Would you please give me the capsule? If you would, I would be ever so grateful. You're dead. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you someday. North grinned. Sure thing, pal. And with no further ado, he let the capsule slip from his fingers and land in Dragon's lap. Hoping you can apply this yourself, because I've got another place to be. Dragon snatched the capsule away, gripping it as tightly as he could in case North changed his mind. What? He spat sardonically. Our little chat isn't good enough for you? North stood up, cracking the joints on his fingers again as he turned away. His hand once again reached into his inside pocket, and when it came away, it was holding some kind of transparent rebreather that he placed over his mouth. Wait. A chill suddenly ran down Dr Dragon's spine. What is that for? You see, buddy, North said. This little attack I'm being paid to help with made it to the grand finale. Ten. There's a... Nope. 
You, you can read them again. <laughs> I was, I was okay, yeah, that's why time. I was doing it, because <laughs> I didn't want you to miss them. And that the, is... This bullying Donnell arc has ended. North turned back to look at him, his smirk visible even through the mask. You asked me if I planted the bomb that blew up the engine, right? That I did. But anyone can do a thing like that. And you don't hire North for a job anyone can do. Nah, I had a whole grocery list. My blowing up the engine was part of that, sure. There was a hollow thunk from the nearest vent. But so was messing with the ship's air supply. And it looks like we've just switched over to the tanks I managed to get to. Still, if you play your cards right, you still have a chance of getting out of here alive. Not a good chance, sure, but still a chance. I already made sure your friends were taken care of, so it's all up to you now. Have fun, okay? Fuck you! Trigon snarled. Buy me dinner first, man! And with that, North began walking away, waving over his shoulder as he headed for the door. Good luck! Do your best! A second later, he flickered out of vision, the only trace he'd ever been there being a single footprint in Darren Rose's blood. And a second after that, the gas started coming in. Bum bum bum! I love how North became more and more meow over the course of the chapter. Yeah, I'm trying to give him a unique voice, and he kind of had that sort of like scummy salesman vibe going on. So I just went with that. Yeah, fits. Yeah, it's me, North. I'm sorry that I, like, lied to your friends and, and ruined them psychologically, but I did it for money, so it was okay, right? Yeah, I'm such a nice guy. Come on, I gave you the Panacea pill, didn't I? Nyak, nyak, nyak. I'm such a rascal. <laughs> so, my Aetheral Space question for Tanhoney is, of the main cast, which ones would rather have ice cream on a hot day and which ones would rather have snow cones? Skipper and Serena would rather have ice cream. Um, mm -hmm. Dragon would have either. Mm -hmm. Ruth would want a snow cone, and Bruno would want a snow cone. Nice. Classic. Classic. I love that, like, Bruno and Serena are distinguishable enough that they are into different things. Like, just like, oh, I don't want to eat peas. Serena, can you eat my peas? And she's like, okay, I love peas. Peas hey, are great. Bruno, you should eat your peas. No. It doesn't matter. It's the same body. Serena can just do it. <laughs> Everyone sounds like a bully in him. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bruno. You're, I, I know she didn't eat your peas the other day. Hey, Bruno, how about a couple of greens, buddy? <laughs> You're kind of weak looking. Dude, I would be pissed if I shared a body with someone and that person only ate like shit all day. <laughs> but yeah, all that right, was well. A from Space 4.13. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, yeah, I, I guess everyone's dying now. Well, actually, everyone's already at the ship. It's really just Dragon that's a problem. And Skipper, I guess, because he went to go get Dragon. Yeah. Oh, Skipper. Is this where Skipper dies? Dan? Well, we'll see. Till, well, next episode in April Space, we'll find <laughs> Wait, out. Wait, Dan, I was joking! <laughs> Dan, no! <laughs> I, I can't tell you whether I'm joking or not, because that would be spoilers either way. <laughs> this is fucked up. Can't believe Skipper <laughs> dies in the fucking North Arc. <laughs> Oops, I did a rascal. <laughs> Alright, bye! Bye!